Hi, I'm Dennis Wingo, and I do a lot of space things. I'm very passionate about space. I began when I was six years old and saw Buzz Aldrin's uh, Gemini 12 sitting on the pad in Cocoa Beach, Florida, uh, when I was very small with my uncle who was in the Air Force. I always loved space. I uh, always had a good good time doing space. I left the computer industry in the 1980s, uh, built a bunch of payloads, flew sounding rocket payloads. I flew the first Macintosh on the space shuttle, uh, flew the first hard drives in space, and then we built the first satellite that was supported by NASA, the first student satellite that NASA supported in the 1990s. So I've always loved space. To me, space apps is exceedingly interesting because it signals a new generation of people that are interested in space. Uh, we had this period where space was the government and if you weren't flying on the space shuttle or if you weren't a scientist who spent 20 years doing space, you couldn't do space. But and, and partially because of some of the stuff that we helped do in the 1990s and some of the people we work with. We helped build a community uh, of small satellite enthusiasts and one of my compatriots, Bob Twiggs, helped design the CubeSat standard. And the purpose of doing that was to democratize space. And it's just really gratifying to see activities like space apps where this is starting to be brought home and to understand where anyone off the street who learns how to program or knows how to solder or understands uh, the Internet of Things, that they can do space themselves. And that is just a, that's a transformative uh, experience and a transformative idea. Innovation in citizen science has always been important. Uh, we don't think about this today because we're not taught enough history, but three centuries ago, two centuries ago, even a hundred years ago, it was scientists that were celebrated, not other people. And Albert Einstein was followed like a rock star. Uh, 200 years ago in England, they used to fill theaters for lectures from scientists uh, because to understand science is to understand the world and it was literally the foundations of our country and the foundations in England that helped bring this about to where anyone could do experiments. Uh, uh, Charles Darwin, his grandfather, Erasmus Darwin, was one of the first citizen scientists. They used to go around and uh, try to understand nature in England. So to see this today and kind of, I call it the revival of citizen science, it is crucially important because there's a lot of things that are very important for us to understand today about our planet and about our civilization's future that I just think it's marvelous. The advice I would have for young hackers is to follow your passion, learn the fundamentals. And I'm gonna use an analogy from an area that you may not think is applicable, but think of football players. Think of the commitment that they have in high school, in college, to get to where they want to go in the pros. And if you uh, listen to the coaches, like our coach in my home state of Alabama, Nick Saban of the Alabama Crimson Tide, he always says, learn the fundamentals. Learn your art. So if you're a space hacker or a hacker of any type, understand programming languages, understand and learn the insides of the processors that you're using. When we were doing our own hacking in the early 1980s, we used to dig into the processors and learn how they were constructed, and we figured out ways to use them that the designers never intended. And we were able to do that and extend their capabilities. So if you learn the fundamentals, find areas that interest you. Mine has always been sensor interfaces. How does the outside world translate into the computer? And then how do you use that to make the computer do things? And this is the literal foundation of the Internet of Things. And so again, follow your passion, 
learn the fundamentals and have fun. <laughs>